Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about range estimating with your circle dot. And I've done prior videos where I was talking about using the average height of a man, which is six foot, or the average size of a passenger car, which is about 15 feet long uh, and six feet wide. Today we're going to talk about using some other things to range estimate. Okay, but Range estimation is really important because as the bullet goes further out, it basically gravity starts pulling it down uh, and we have to compensate for that bullet drop okay so um if you're using a 50 yard zero which is what i have on this rifle here um uh, you know basically with the 50 yard zero i got first zero at 50 yards second zero at 200 yards uh at about 250 yards i'm about three to four inches low which means that from zero distance all the way out to 250 yards, I can put the dot here and I'll either be four inches low or four inches high. Okay, so I don't have to do any uh, any drop compensation or, 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 or any adjustments from zero distance out to 250 yards. But at, once it gets to 300 yards, I need to start taking that into account. So, uh, so from zero distance, 250 yards, you know, Put the dot there either four inches low or four inches high at 300 yards i need to put the dot in the face so i can drop the bullets into the chest okay um at 400 yards i need to put the dot on top of the head so i can drop them into the chest and at 500 yards i gotta cut my man in half right so the distance from the belt to the head take that distance put that over the head that's your hold over at 500 yards okay so that's easy enough uh, the only issue now is being able to judge the distance so we know what our, you know, what holdover to hold, right? What, what our hold is going to be. So we've got to be able to, uh, to judge the distance. And we're going to use the 65 MOA circle to do that. Uh, let me give you guys a quick, quick peek here. So as I hold the rifle here, there's my 65 MOA circle. So you can see there's a dot there, a 2 MOA dot with a 65 MOA circle. Um, and you know, the, the circle is really useful for finding a dot. So let's say you're moving. First of all, if you're moving across the snow here, let's say you're running, right? You can see how that dot by itself would kind of be easy to lose, but that big circle, you know, especially when you're running and shooting helps you find the dot, right? So again, against the dirt over there, you might be able to find the dot and keep up with it. But if you're moving, you know, running across snow, you can see how, how it's really easy to lose the dot unless you have unless you have that big 65 MOA circle. Okay, so now the 65 MOA circle is great for helping us find the dot, but it is also an excellent measuring tool. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys uh, some information that I've worked out here, some some measurements using this formula. Okay, so the formula is because the fixed measurement that we have is 65 minutes of angle. So I take my inches, multiply it by the conversion factor, 95.5, okay? And then divide it by the 65, because that's the fixed measuring point that we have. And that's gonna give me the yards, okay? So everything that I'm gonna give you guys here is in yards. Uh, if I accidentally make a mistake of saying feet, I mean yards, everything's in yards, okay? Um, uh, now what is in feet is gonna be the size of the, of, of the objects that I'm looking at. So I'm using objects of known size to judge the distance. Now, the thing to understand with distance, right? And one of my viewers brought this up in the comments. Uh, if you're looking at something in the distance, okay? And there's other things between you and the thing that you're looking at, then that your brain is going to interpret that object that you're looking at in the distance uh, to be further away, okay? Um, likewise, if there's there's nothing in between you and what you're looking at, right? Like if you're looking at something across a body of water or across an open field, your brain is going to interpret that thing that you're looking at to be closer to you, okay? So that's why if when I'm here in the woods, my sense of distance is really different when I get to an open field or I'm looking across like a body of water um, so you, we need an objective way to measure distance, okay? Um, and the, the 65 MOA circle that's already in the scope is, is, is extremely convenient for that, okay? So um, using this formula over here, right, 
using some some objects of known size. So the the most large commercial uh, airplanes, right, like like Boeing seven forty sevens or seven eight sevens, right? Uh, there are they are about two hundred twenty five feet long. Okay, two hundred twenty five feet. Okay, so if you look at a two hundred twenty five foot seven forty seven or 787 Dreamliner, okay? Right, when you look at it through your circle dot, okay, uh, the point at where the airplane is going to fit completely inside of your circle, okay, is going to be 3,966 uh, feet, okay? And you can just kind of round that up to 4,000. I'm giving you guys uh, an exact number here so that if you try to test out this formula, you'll know that you did the calculation correctly if you come up to this number. And then you can just round it, okay? Because I would just round this to 4,000. So I know that, uh, here, I'll hold this here and make sure I got this in the camera so you guys can take a quick screenshot of this and then save this information somewhere. Okay, so you take a screenshot of that. So, at the point that my 747 is fitting entirely inside of this circle, it is at about 4,000 yards. Remember, everything's in yards there. If I say feet by accident, you know, I made a mistake. Everything. So it's at 4,000 yards. So if I can only fit half of that airplane inside of this circle, well, I just cut the number in half. So I know that now my airplane is at 2,000 yards. Or if I can only fit a quarter of the airplane inside of this circle, well, now I know that that airplane is at... 1,000 yards, okay? Um, so even though we are kind of fixed, uh, even though we're kind of fixed, you know, we have one use it unit of measurement, 65 MOA circle, uh, we can, you know, we can, uh, you know, once we got these measurements, we can kind of divide it up and we can get some more, some more information out of that. Now you might say, you know, um, how useful is it for me to know that an airplane is 1,000 yards away, it's still out of the range of my AR-15. Well, for one thing, you might, um, you know, it, it, that gives you a good idea of how much distance you have to travel to get, you know, within range. You know that, hey, I need to travel, you know, I, I, I need to go another 500 yards in in order to get within range, okay? Uh, but again, it, it, you know, if you're looking at a large airplane, an open field, right, it's very easy to get confused with that airplane, you know, you thinking that that airplane is at, let's say, 400 yards, when in fact it's at 2,000 yards, right? So that's why we need an objective measurement to judge the distance, and the 65 MOA circle does that for you, right? So uh, over here, we were talking about a large commercial airplane, 747, 787, uh, 40 windows. Uh, that's a good way to, uh, to, to quickly determine how big your airplane is, because the large ones are usually going to have 40 windows, the smaller ones, the ones that are about 150 feet to 175 feet, they usually have about 20 windows on one side, right? So when you're looking at it from the side, you can tell the difference whether you're looking at 40 windows or you're looking at 20 windows, right? So if you're only seeing about 20 windows, you're looking at a smaller airplane. So at the point where um, the smaller airplane, which is about 150 feet long, fits completely inside of your 65 M wave circle. Okay. Uh, it's at 2,644 yards. Okay. And again, you can just round this down to 2,500 yards. Okay. So, so again, I'm just giving you exact numbers here. So if you, if, if you practice on the calculator doing this formula, uh, you know that, you know, you know that you're doing it right. If you come up to that number. Okay. So let's get away from the airport. Let's get out on the roads. Uh, and let's some of the things that you are very commonly going to see on the roads is tractor trailers, right? So the average tractor trailer, right? Uh, you know, the, the, the cab with the trailer behind it is 75 feet long, okay? Which also happens to be the average length of my trees here. So this information here that, that I'm using for my tractor trailers also applies to the tree lines when I'm looking at it, right? The only difference is that when I'm measuring tree lines, but when I'm measuring tractor trailers, I'm going across. If I'm measuring tree lines, I'm going vertical, okay? But the, it's the same number. It's 75 feet. So 
at the point where the tractor trailer fits completely inside of my 65 M-way circle. Okay, I am at um, 1,322 yards. Okay, and again, I would uh, um, I would uh, round that down to 1,300. Right, so if um, if you can only fit half of the track trailer inside your 65 MOA circle, you just cut the number in half. You know it's at about 600 yards. If you can only fit a quarter of it, uh, you know you're at 300 yards, okay? Uh, but the other thing that we can use is we can use just the trailer part, right? Because the trailer part, which is also standardized pretty much, is 55 feet long. So the 55-foot trailer by itself behind the truck, okay, if it fits inside of that circle over there, it's going to be at 969 yards, okay? 969, again, I would just uh, round that up to, to 1,000, right? So if you can only fit right, so the trailer part, if it fits completely inside of this circle here, uh, it's at 1,000 a, a yards. If you can only fit half of it inside the circle, well, you know you're at 500 yards. If you can only fit a quarter of it, you're at 255, uh, 250 yards, okay? Um, so now, how about the cab? The cab, you know, the sleeper cabs, right? The ones where the, the truckers basically sleep in the back. Uh, those, those are uh, 20 feet long, okay? So at the point where the cab fits inside your 65 MOA circle, uh, that truck is at 353 uh, yards. Okay, so uh, that's a, you know, 353 yards, 350, let's say 350 yards, that's well inside the capabilities of your AR-15. So if you've got a bad guy shooting at you next to one of these trucks and you see that, you know, you can quickly realize that, hey, if that truck fits inside of my 65 MOA circle, he's at 350 yards. And we said earlier that if uh, at 300 yards, you're putting the dot here to drop him into the chest. At 400 yards, we said you're putting the dot on top of the head to drop him into the chest. So he's kind of in the middle, 350 yards. So I would basically just go in the middle, right? I'd put it in the middle, drop him into your chest. Um, so really useful information, right? Uh, now, I I've done a video that went into a lot of detail on using... Uh, uh, passenger cars because passenger cars the average 15 feet long six feet six feet wide okay at the point where your passenger car fits per you know inside of your circle right you are at oops 264 yards okay now when I did the video on this uh, because I had actually rather than do calculations on that video I had actually gone out with a rangefinder and a, uh, um, uh, a, you know, one of these um, uh, Holosum 510Cs with a, the with a scope. And that was dope. I was actually, like, you know, looking at cars in the distance and putting the range finder on them. So what I, what I said in that video is that if the car extends past the circle, if, 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 if the bumper goes there, rear bumper goes there, and the front of the car extends past the circle, uh, you are basically inside of 200 yards. Well, now I'm giving, I may, using that formula, I'm able to give you a more exact number, whereas it, at the point where the entire car will fit perfectly inside of the circle, you are at 264 yards, okay? Um, now, this one I had the inches, right? So, the average door is 80 inches tall, okay? So, important because most buildings have doors on them, right? So, 80 inches tall at the point where um, your door... Fits perfectly inside of your circle. Uh, you are at 118 yards. Okay, 118 yards. Now, the thing with this is, let's say uh, uh, you can only fit half. Uh, let's say you know. So, so this way, let's say that instead of the door going from there to there, your door goes from there to there, right? So let's say that door now only takes up half of your circle from the dot down. Well, now you're at 200, or actually 220. You would just double this number, right? So I got this one at, uh, at actually 240. Uh, so we can we can average this up from 118 to let's say 120. So if you can only fit, if that door fits in half of your circle, you just double this number so that you are at about uh, uh, 240, okay? And then um, average man, six foot tall, 
and he can fit perfectly inside of your circle over here. Uh, he's at, uh, uh, where is he? he was at uh, 105 yards, right? That's the exact number. 105 yards. So at 200 yards, at 200 yards, your man's going to stand from there to there, okay? Um, at, um, that's at, uh, at, at 200, at 300 yards, he'll usually come right there. At 400 yards, he's there. At 500 yards, he's there. Now, incidentally, at 500 yards, basically, there's this 65 MOA circle has these lines over here like this. Okay. At 500 yards, your man is going to be equal to that little line right there, right? So that's a quick, easy way. I mentioned this in the previous video. If your man is equal to that, he's at 500 yards in height, right? So you put his feet there, head there. He's at 500 yards, right? So, and you know what your bullet drop is at that point, right? You're going to take, you're going to basically take half of that, put that over his head, and that should put you in the ballpark. You should be able to, at the very least, have very effective suppression fire, okay? Uh, as far as the width of the man, um, it, your man is going to go at, uh, let's say, the average man being about two feet wide. If your man stands with one shoulder here, one shoulder there okay uh he is at 35 yards okay so if you're looking to get a uh if you're out if, if you're out and you're looking to get like a 35 yard zero on your rifle um what you can do and you don't know where you don't know where 35 yards is right what you can do is you can have somebody stand out there 35 yards separate the upper from the lower from your rifle so you're not pointing a gun at the guy uh separate the upper and the lower and now you can basically look through the upper and you will be able to tell hey stop right there you know you, you know you'll know exactly where 35 yards is or if you want to actually get him out to 50 yards then what i would just do is i would basically just have his shoulders go inside the circle so uh that's a, a good way to figure out you know to figure out where you want to zero your rifle if you don't have let's say like a range finder or some way to measure 35 yards or 50 yards okay so uh let me hold this up again. I think this is really useful information to have. Certainly interesting information. So this tells you those items over there, right? On the left, it shows you how big they are in feet. Only the doors in inches, right? And then over here to the right, it shows you at what distance the entire object is going to fit inside of your 65 uh, MOA circle, okay? Uh, so uh, really quickly, I want to talk to you guys about the rifle setup over here. Again, I've mentioned it in other videos. Uh, I think this is an excellent rifle setup. Um, I, I tend to call this a general purpose rifle setup. Okay, a lot of times people have a lot of different, uh, you know, um, you know, terms like general purpose rifle, special purpose rifle, uh, uh, recce rifle. You know, I call this a general purpose rifle because it's exactly that general purpose. This is the kind of rifle that I would kind of use for anything. Um, urban environment, woods environment. It's got the it's got the optic. Optic is great because I can basically, you know, get on target really quickly, find that dot. Okay. I can move and shoot with this because I got that big window. I got the magnifier behind it. So I can, I can, uh, I've actually, I've, I've uh, had this out to 500 yards, actually 550 yards with the magnifier, you know, and, and, and good match and good match grade ammunition. I can get really nice groups with this rifle out to, uh, 550 yards, uh, a light. Okay. I like these pistol lights, um, a thousand looms, which is not much less than if I had the light on the side over here, a rifle light, um, I like the I like the pistol lights on the rifle because they're kind of easy on, easy off. Uh, so I, I tend to really like that because if I don't if I if I set the if I set this up with a rifle light that has a pressure pad, uh, that's a pain in the ass. I can't like take that off, right? Because if, if I know I'm not going to be using the light, maybe I just want to take it off completely. Okay. So again, I, I've covered this setup in a different video. Look up Urban Rifle um, in my channel name, and you'll see where I go into this in some more detail. If you notice, I have my flip up sights here because this is the thing I'm the least likely to use. Okay. I am very big uh, in giving priority to the things I know I'm going to be using. So the things I know I'm going to be using is my optic magnifier, maybe the light, 
Hopefully, I'll never have to use the backup sights because that's what they are, backup sights. Uh, but if I needed to, um, you know, things can move on this rifle, right? Because as long as, like, let's say I see that my my uh, uh, red dot is starting to do the blinky blinky where it's telling me that the battery is dying and I know I don't have any other batteries, well, then the magnifier is not going to be very useful to me. I can take this off and then I can move this back here, use the red dot while I still have some uh, battery power left. To get a to basically get a um, a co-witness, and I, I proved this in the last video that I did on this subject. When you move this this rear sight from here to back there, there's almost like very little adjustment that you need to make, okay? Uh, because it, it's really a small movement. And then if you move this up to, from here to there, same deal. You, you're not going to have to make much of an adjustment. Um, so this is you know this is a a very decent setup. Um, I mean, I have other scopes. I'm sorry, I have rifles where I have like variable scopes out on it, and the variable scope is great um, if it's you know because it, with this I got a three X magnification. I also have another magnifier that has six X, but uh, with the variable scopes I'm able to get up to eight uh, X. You got another one that's got ten X. So it especially if I know that I'm going to be living, you know, in that you know shooting in that. Uh, five to six hundred yard range then yeah I, maybe it'd be nice to have that extra magnification uh and that, especially at that distance if it's going to be windy i want to have i want to be able to use wind holes which is something that i i don't have on this uh, but again that's a very specialized circumstance where i know that i'm going to be doing most of my shooting in that you know in that 400 yards to 600 yards uh most of the shooting I would normally expect to do, well, not even expect, here's the thing, let me put it this way, um, somebody's a lot more dangerous to you if they're close to you, right, so I want the rifle, most of my rifles to be set up so I can deal with an immediate threat that is close to me, right, I want to come up, get that down on target really quickly, right, be able to move around corners, uh, that's not as that's not so easily done with a variable scope okay so my idea is that I, I want the rifle to really excel in cqb capabilities and i want it to have some distant shooting uh capabilities but i can afford to be a little bit slower be maybe a little you know maybe not be a little not as good let's say at distance because the threat is a little further away from me in CQB type environments, um, there's basically, the, you know, the circumstances are less forgiven, right? You make a mistake, you a lot of times you don't get a chance to correct that mistake. Whereas if I'm a little bit off shooting at something at 500 yards, well, I'm behind cover. I can take a second shot, a third shot, a fourth shot. You can't do that so well at uh, in CQB. So if I come around the corner and... Uh, you know, I don't get, let's say, proper placement with a variable scope and I'm seeing scope shadow, you know, that can get you dead. Okay, so that's why it is more important to me that the rifle be set up for a CQB capability and then add to that the distance shooting capability, right, rather than the reverse, right? Now, that said, uh, if, let's say, you, I think if you got, let's say, uh, uh, if you're working with a team of whatever, eight people, you know, d d yes, now definitely I would want to have most of the guys with red dots and then have a few guys or one or two guys with, with the variable scopes, okay? So, uh, or, you know, even if I'm working alone, you know, I can have this as my main gun and then you can have the other gun off to the side or, or basically, let's say, in a, in a position, you know, in, in a, um, a position where you think you would likely be using it, right? You can just kind of plant it there so that it's there. But then if you're moving around, you know, use a gun like this. So anyway, uh, I just want to explain to you guys why this is set up the way it is. You got to have a sling. Sling's really important. Um, retains the rifle. Well, and I love the fast loops because you can loosen it up really quickly. Do your, because you can lift it up, do your mag changes, right? But if you're shooting, standing up, tighten it up, then use the, use the uh, you know, use the, the sling to brace the rifle like that okay so slings really useful like that so hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you guys enjoyed this data that i put together for you guys and i'll talk to you all soon